Hey everyone, we are at the cusp of Final Fantasy VII R hitting store shelves. I believe some people have gotten their copies already. I believe there are are units out in the wild. I think some people have gotten them early. Uh, of course, there are digital downloads that um, by midnight tonight, I think it's reasonably to be expected that everyone who wants to play the game day one is going to have it, right? Um, streamers are going to be playing it. Uh, there's going to no longer be any mystery about this release. It's going to be out, it's going to be out in the open as to what this is, uh, <laughs> Uh, how it plays, how it handles, how good it is. Um, Final Fantasy VII will be out, is what I'm getting at. We are in the, the last stages of Final Fantasy VII R, part one being uh, the pre-release cycle. Like We are approaching that point where uh, they can't really hide things about the game anymore. And and that's the, uh, the, really, the really big thing, I, I think, uh, the really, uh, I wanted to take the time to make a video talking about what I expect is going to happen once uh, all of the bullshit surrounding Final Fantasy VII R is uh, commonly known and understood. I, I think most people are kind of, uh, uh, you know, either either uh, saving them some some spoilers or don't believe them or are sort of like convincing themselves they aren't a big deal or listening to like corrupt gaming journalists. Uh, I think once the game actually comes out, it's going to completely, it's going to be very, very controversial because th there is a very glaring flaw with this release. Um, Square Enix specifically said this was going to be a remake of Final Fantasy VII and uh, they couldn't manage it. This is not a remake. Uh, see my other video for details on that. Essentially, they changed everything about it. The the plot, the characters, uh, the ideas. Uh, a lot of it has been botched, ruined, and twisted beyond recognition. This is not Final Fantasy VII. It goes beyond the sort of like a making the game episodic at this point. It's uh, It straight up feels like a completely different game to the point where... Uh, Game journalist shills like Jason Schreier are coming out and trying to call it a reboot rather than a remake. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of interesting language surrounding this release. Uh, a lot of shilling, a lot of damage control. I, I do think a lot of uh, YouTubers are um, coming out and already shilling for it. I know Maximilian Dude is. I know I'm sure a bunch of other people are. I I'm not sure. Uh, maybe that's something we should do is put together a list of everyone who's uh, who's coming out and damage controlling this game existing in this state because uh, uh, nobody wanted this. Like nobody wanted this weird alternate continuity Final Fantasy VII that uh, specifically tries to retcon the original. And, and that's exactly what this is. Uh, um, here's the thing about Final Fantasy VII R and, and the reason I think this game doesn't really appeal to anyone. Like put it in the simplest possible terms. Uh, Classic fans won't like it because it's nothing like the original, and new fans won't like it because it requires you to understand the original to understand the significance of what's going on. Like, you won't understand the significance of uh, of the flashback sequences or, or what they're showing you unless you played the original Final Fantasy VII and understand this plot. So, this is an essentially a very... It feels like something that a hack filmmaker would put together, like someone who like was asked to remake a classic movie despite not knowing anything about it. Like it's like a, I can't think of any examples. What's a really bad? What's a what's a really bad film remake? Uh, uh, what the Princess Bride remake would have been, right? Like it just it wouldn't have added anything. It would it wouldn't have contributed anything. Uh, these guys are so obsessed with pushing their own sort of a agenda or, or their own uh, twist on the story that they're ruining what they're trying to do, right? What, what the original did, right? Like, you see this all the time with a lot of these remakes. Oh, the Black Christmas remake, like 2019. Uh, Black Christmas 2019, yeah. That terrible, terrible movie <laughs> that I did sit through. Uh <laughs> Uh, I didn't see the original Black Christmas, but boy, was was Black Christmas 2019. Uh, that that was kind of a trip, right? 
but it's the same kind of thing. It's not really politically motivated. It's more creatively motivated. Like someone like Nomura wants to put his own twist on a Final Fantasy VII and uh, put in all of this stupid uh, Nomura-inspired, you know, you know Nomura-style shit in there, like you know, musical sequences, uh, pff, convoluted plot elements. Uh, there's so much about Final Fantasy VII R that's already a massive, massive uh, failure, right? Uh, clearly a failure. And, and I do think, uh, well, what is the situation going to look like uh, a week from now? Like, how controversial is this release going to be? Um, I I think this is going to be the end of Final Fantasy VII as a brand. I, I don't think uh, the Square Enix is going to be able to continue pushing this brand as one of the highlights of their portfolio because they essentially took uh, a golden opportunity to uh, sell Final Fantasy VII to a new audience and completely shat on it. Like, they completely failed to build up on the world of Final Fantasy VII and uh, sell it to modern audiences. It is it is a complete train wreck what they did. And uh, uh, I, I do think it's going to end up a lot like Final Fantasy XV and thirteen to an extent, I think, in which... Uh, uh, critics are go critics and fanboys are going to say it's good or mediocre and that like they're going to do better next time and uh, uh, it's simply not going to happen. You, you know what I mean? Like uh, people are just going to lose interest. Square is at that point. Like Square is absolutely at that point where they they can't really be considered the uh, the kings of the JRPG genre anymore. Like they they're just not. Like they're not putting out games. Uh, the games aren't good enough. They're not coming out. They're they're having all these problems. Like Final Fantasy VII, I was skeptical of Final Fantasy VII R the instant I heard it was episodic, and that really should have been a red flag for everyone. Like um, the Midgar portion takes like what like four hours in the original. Like I think it took like three in my playthrough, but I was using the uh, the speed up feature for battles. All you had to do, all you had to do, was take the original game. Give it voice acting and uh, maybe update the visuals while not really disrespecting the source material, like not disrespecting the original. And yet uh, it's obvious at this point that no one who worked on this remake gave a fuck about the world, the characters, the original gameplay, the original storyline. Or about Final Fantasy VII as a whole. Like, when you get right down to it, like, all they really care about, all the all the decisions they made, these were all marketing decisions. Like, turn-based action. Like, they didn't do that because it would make Final Fantasy VII better. They did it because they thought it would be more appealing to a mass audience. Like, they didn't shove Sephiroth in, in all the marketing material because uh, uh, they wanted to flesh out his storyline more. Like, no. Uh, he was there because uh, they need him for the marketing materials. He's the... He's like the iconic face of the series, right? Of the uh, of the game, right? It's it's uh, very, very, very frustrating to see like <laughs> these companies continue to mess up in this fashion, in this uh, in this way, and continued to be defended by these uh, corrupt game journalists and YouTubers with an agenda. We saw something similar with Street Fighter V where plenty of fans were upset about, like, everything Capcom was pulling. But, like, uh, companies like Screw Attack, like, the, uh, like organizations like Evo, uh, you know, these, these uh, competitive players, they all had an agenda to continue pushing it in order to, uh, in order to uh, keep their careers going and keep the money flowing. It's... It is disgusting, like downright disgusting. And, and I do think that's uh, what's going to happen going uh, in the next week or so. We're going to see a lot of people try to say this is one of the best games of the year, that Square Enix has done it again, that they've uh, rebooted this classic. But uh, actual fans are going to be asking all these very, very uncomfortable questions about like uh, the purpose of the time to mentors and just the whole... Uh, all the weird changes, uh, the retcons, it's just <sighs> the nature of the episodic. Like, considering the nature of uh, how this uh, this episodic game is structured, I don't think it's going to be three episodes long, like has been commonly assumed. I think it's going to be more than that. I I'm thinking at least five. Like, I'm thinking it's going. they're going to flesh out every little bit 
of this as much as possible. It's uh, you're going to have an entire like prison segment, I think. <laughs> like a, a thing that took like only a couple of hours in the original is suddenly going to have its entire game dedicated to it. That's going to just shit all over the original. And if the original, if this game is so different from the original, like. Again, why would anybody want to play it? Uh, I do think... So, I, I think the fanboys and the shills and the game journalists, they're going to damage control this game. They're going to, like, defend it. They're going to, like, make excuses for it. They're going to try to justify it. You can already see them doing this to a certain extent. But what's going to happen is that the actual consumers, the gamers, the RPG fans, the, the, the classic Final Fantasy fans, uh, people who actually want to play the game, right... Uh, People are going to lose interest in this uh, in this episodic release. I, I do think episode one is going to do fairly well initially, and much like Death Stranding, it's going to lose a lot of a lot of momentum going forward. I think most people are going to like play it and uh, be rather put off by it, put off by the story, uh, unimpressed with it, unwilling to continue, and uh, they aren't really going to get hyped up for episode two. Like, if you think about it, like, everyone who finishes episode one is going to have to go out and, uh, you know, get get through episode two and get through episode three. And uh, I, I don't think that every single person who plays episode one is going to go ahead and finish the entire series. Uh, Square Enix is uh, pr is trying to milk the brand, uh, milk this IP, and I, I think... I think they vastly underestimated just how much people don't really like this episodic release model. I, I, I think it's not going to do well for them at all. I, I think it's going to be a failure. I I expect them to still justify it, but try to justify it and try to make excuses, but I, I don't think they'll be able to actually get away with it. Uh, I, think, I think they're going to... Uh, I don't think they'll be able to do... I think they're going to lose money on this project. It took five years to make. It shouldn't have taken that long. Um, it's not really finished yet. I, I, I am expecting a repeat of Final Fantasy XV. Uh, people don't talk about this because uh, it puts Square in a bad light. But Final Fantasy XV is not complete. They never finished all the DLC that they promised. It's uh, it's embarrassing. Like They sold DLC that they never gave to people. and It's kind of bizarre how uh, how people will uh, shill and damage control this. Uh, I, I suspect that Final Fantasy VII R is going to be the last major project that Square Enix ever puts out. I, I don't see them really recovering uh, and ever reaching the same heights they did in the past. Like people have always been for the past twenty years almost, people have been like making excuses for them, uh, you know, shilling for trying to uh, pretend that there's going to be some kind of glorious recovery and glorious renaissance and it, it simply hasn't happened. And it, I think with this release it, it's never going to happen. They they took this iconic game that that would have been very, very, very easy to remake and they completely shit all over it. It's a complete disaster. And I and I do think it's going to be a controversy to some extent. Like to what extent, I'm not sure yet. But but like the uh, the rage I'm seeing among those who uh, who uh, understand this and who are following the situation, it's very very real. Okay, people are legitimately upset about what Square Enix has done with this game, and uh, I don't think they'll be able to. They'll be able to uh, brush this aside. I think it's going to become a real issue. And uh, I will be there to uh, support you guys in your riot against Square Enix. Because they absolutely deserve everything they get.